Hi, my name is Elle and I am learning to be a seamstress. So I thought I'd quickly film this evening, just probably the first half of the video. Um, whilst I am in one of my new me made dresses, I'm having some friends over for dinner and I put this on and I was like, oh, I should start my video wearing this dress. Um, and then I'll probably pick it up tomorrow wearing something different because I actually need to start cooking and I haven't prepped and they're coming over in like half an hour. So I thought I would do a little video showing you everything that I made in January and maybe a little bit at the end of December. Um, so I'm going to start with this dress because I'm wearing it and it is probably, I say this every time I make something, it's probably my favourite thing I've made, um, especially in 2022. And of course it is my trusty pattern. It is the indigo pattern from Tilly and the Buttons, but with the huge Anthea puff sleeve. Oh, look at that puff. Amazing. Um, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm using a rainbow tartan poly viscous wool? Wool? I don't, I'm gonna write it here because I'm just forgotten. Um, and it's quite thick, so it's definitely not a summer dress, but that's fine. And I made it with two tiers. I'm gonna show you a picture of what it looks like standing up. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm really happy with the neckline. I don't always get the crispest of necklines, and I did this time. Um, I just love this style, and I am just don't know if I'm gonna start boring people if I just make the same indigo dress with puff sleeves over and over again but you know if I love it for a bit that's all that matters um I think it's such a fabulous dress I just think it's like a showstopper dress and I've already got so many oh I've already got so many compliments on it and I did a few reels on it on Instagram they're the kind of ones that did really well and yeah it's just a big tick from me. Also, I made this cute bow to go with it. Here we go. If you didn't see that clearly, I will enter a photo here of the bow. And I'm actually planning on doing a tutorial soon of how to make this bow because it's such a great scrap buster and really simple to make. And I just think it really like elevates the outfit. So um, I also made at the end of December another version of this dress as in the indigo with the anthea sleeves and that was like my christmas like party dress and um i made that out of a taffeta which i got from new craft house and it's this gorgeous like i don't even know what you i think it's either plum or grape is how they describe it on the website and i actually used the selvage of the fabric to kind of like give it this extra something at the bottom of the third tier um or second tier if you don't count the bodice which I guess you wouldn't and I just I think that made me realize how much I loved this kind of look uh so yeah that was what I made at the end of December um and yeah now I'm gonna go and cook and I'm gonna come back in a different outfit tomorrow when it's a bit sunnier and talk you through the rest of the things that I made hi everyone I'm back um let's crack on with the video so I obviously have told you about my gingham dress and then my other indigo, which was made out of the taffeta. Um, as well, at the end of last year, I made this dress that I'm wearing now, which is a slip dress um, out of this gorgeous fabric, which I was gifted from Rainbow Fabrics. And this slip dress is just so versatile. Like for instance, now I'm wearing a t-shirt underneath it. I've also worn a turtleneck. Um, I've just filmed a reel about all the ways that I can style it as well. So I'm going to be posting that really soon. And I just think it is gorgeous. The only issue I have is I obviously made it out of satin fabric. Um, satin is notoriously hard to sew with. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Okay. <laughs> um, and I am used to sewing with cottons and thicker fabrics and even jerseys. And I did find the satin hard to do, especially here when obviously the straps are very thin and fiddly and you have to cut them on the bias. And that did take a lot of concentration for me. I know a lot of people um, cut satin in a specific way with rotary um, blades and use very specific pins. I did decide to use my scissors and I think maybe next time I would um, use a rotary cutter as I did find my cuts to be quite jagged. 
but obviously it just takes a lot of practice. Um, I think it did turn out really nicely. I wore it on Christmas Day and yeah, I don't know why I've suddenly got like a blocked nose. It's just come on in like 30 seconds. <laughs> Ignore me. Um, yeah, so that was December done. And then into January, I actually don't think I did that much sewing, but maybe I did. Well, we'll find out now. Um, one of the things I did make, which I had a little bit of trouble with, was... Oh, I always do this. I always, like, forget to get the stuff ready. It was this suit, which was the N6697 from New Look. And I decided to make both the skirt and the shirt in a pink cotton that I had been gifted from Minerva as part of being a Minerva brand ambassador. As I thought it would make like a very 60s-esque mad men's style skirt suit. And I don't own anything like that. It's basically a very simple pencil skirt and a short sleeved button up shirt. I made the shirt first and I found it quite a simple sew. I was using, um, a medium weight cotton so it's very easy to sew with i found the um collar actually just quite an easy basic collar it didn't take too much um like hard work to sew this and so i really enjoyed that i then made the skirt and i tried it on and i thought that it fit um i had made it in a larger size because i have a large size hips and smaller size waist and instead of grading i think because i was having a bit of trouble with like my sizing recently I just kind of went up the size which I shouldn't have done I should have graded into the smaller size on the waist as it was a bit baggy around the waist but I thought uh, it's not the end of the world but unfortunately the fabric was quite see-through so I needed to line it so then I bought some pink satin um, fabric to line it with and just cut out the same pieces again out of the lining fabric and then somehow I screwed up as when I was entering the lining into the skirt they didn't quite match up I then had to like cut some excess fabric off of the lining and then ended up making it all too small and I couldn't really get it on so it definitely can be fixed I've kind of put it to the side for a moment because I just it was very stressful towards the end and I obviously just didn't do the right thing but I'm gonna pick it up again soon and try and fix that because I think I have put it on and from the front it does look good I mean I've left the bottom I haven't hemmed the bottom because I'm still working my way around it but I did post the photo on my Instagram if you want to have a look um because I actually had a deadline and I had to post it for Minerva and I it, it's not how I I mean it's wearable like the lining is there in there and it is wearable but it's not super neat and I do want to fix it and that is my plan for this year is to not just do these half-assed attempts at outfits and garments and actually try and see them through to the end make sure they fit make sure they look really good like try and become a better sewist so yeah I made that I also had a 70s fancy dress party that I was attending and it's out it was outside because it was like a pub crawl car treasure hunt and in memory of a family friend of mine and so I found some like bright green uh jersey fabric online I didn't and this is really weird of me to do I bought the fabric from a fabric company called pound meter and um the experience was not good so I'll just leave that there um but I made this I did I did like the fabric when it finally did arrive um and basically what I did was I had this dress pattern from McCall's M7999 and I just made the top half and then I kind of cut it at the waist and so that's how I made this turtleneck because I thought it would be really cool we're outside got to be warm so I made this green turtleneck with some brown Jessa trousers in a brown cord that I've made last year and yeah this is the outfit I think it looks cool I'm really happy with how it turned out I did make a toile of this first in a green jersey that I bought from Rainbow Fabrics and it's really lovely I've been wearing it to work I'm glad I made the toile um it was a very simple quick sew like a lot of these jersey tops are and um I'm definitely getting a lot of wear out of it so I'm really happy about that I also made a sweatshirt um which I love so much uh I made it out of a green green it was gray I made it out of a gray French terry which I got from BST fabrics with matching gray ribbing which I also got from BST fabrics and then onto it I used 
my first ever attempt at iron-on vinyl, which was gifted to me from Happy Fabrics. It's their new metallic stretch vinyl range. So you can iron it onto stretchy clothing and it won't kind of um, distort or like go really weird. Like it moves and stretches with the fabric. And I decided to just put the word potatoes on the front of my jumper because I love potatoes. Everyone was like, um, what's the joke? Like, what are you trying to do? There is no joke. It's nothing clever. I love potatoes. So I wanted a jumper that said potatoes on it in nice pink shiny writing, because why not? And that is probably the, my favorite thing that I've made this month, apart from my gingham dress, which obviously is like a different level of my favorite thing. Um, so yeah, I actually don't think I made anything else, but that does seem like quite a lot. I'm currently making a pair of trousers because if you watched my last video when I had a bit of a breakdown about my weight, it was because I'd made this pair of peppermint wide leg trousers and they really didn't fit. <sighs> they were too tight, so I've gone up a size and I've cut out a twill in some twill that I had in my stash. I didn't have enough twill in the one colour to make the whole pair of trousers so I've had to like mix two different fabrics for this pair of trousers and I'm hoping that it ends up to be like a really cool wearable twirl but um I'll show you next time uh and so hopefully the next video I have I would have made a pair of trousers because the only other structured pair of trousers with a fly and a zip and a waistband that's not like stretchy are the dresser trousers that I just spoke about those cord ones and they weren't quite right a I made them too short they're like not the right length. B, the um, crotch doesn't really line up, like the fly doesn't really line up to the waistband. And it was my first attempt, so I am proud of it, but it's not as sophisticated an end result as I wanted. So really hoping these peppermint wild, like wide leg trousers work for me and I'm really taking my time making them. Um, but yeah, that's everything I made in January. I'm going to do another video soon about February. I've got some really cool new fabrics on the go and I can't wait to show you. So thank you so much for watching and see you soon.